Good morning, students. Uh, my name is Kevin Mullins. I am uh, one of the teachers for the 11th grade guys Sunday school class. And today we're going to be in the book of Luke. So the last couple of weeks, uh, we've, we've also been in Luke. We've been uh, studying and looking at the crucifixion of Christ, um, his resurrection. And then today we're going to be looking at uh, two, two disciples, kind of the aftermath of the, res- of the resurrection, um, and those two disciples meeting Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Um, so we're going to actually be in Luke chapter 24, and I'm going to read 13 through 24 here. It says that now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but did not find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. So let's think a little bit about uh, the context here, what's going on. So if we, if we think about what's happened um, and where these disciples are right now, okay, so they're outside of Jerusalem. Think about what, what they've experienced over the past three days. So, you know, they, they had the Passover feast uh, with Jesus. He was arrested. They watched him be crucified. And then, all of a sudden on this day, they go to the tomb and his body is missing. Now, obviously at this point, the disciples were not thinking about Jesus being raised from the dead, even though Jesus had prophesied that that was what was going to happen. But that was not on their mind. Obviously, these guys are confused, right? They're confused. They don't know what's happening. But also, remember... They are scared. Um, they just saw their master be executed. He was put on a cross and executed, and they're scared. Okay, if we go back to Matthew 26, 56, it tells us that all the disciples deserted him and fled after he was arrested. So that includes these guys. Okay, so these two guys that were with Jesus were part of that group um, that deserted him. Okay, they, they all ran away. Um, Zechariah 13.7 tells us that I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. So that's exactly what's happened. Okay, the disciples have all fled him. They, it, they are in disarray okay, since his crucifixion. They don't understand what, what's going on. Okay, so here they are. These guys, they're walking out, out of, outside of Jerusalem. Um, and this guy comes up. Obviously, Luke lets us know that this is Jesus, but they don't know this at the time. But this guy walks up to them and starts asking them questions about what's going on. Now, there's a very interesting verse in here. Verse 16 tells us that the disciples were kept from recognizing Jesus. It's an interesting verse. Um, There's a couple, couple takeaways from that particular verse. Okay, so one, obviously, Jesus had appeared to them in a physical form that was different than what they were used to. And actually, if you go back um, to Mark 16, chapter, or, yeah, Mark 16, verses 12 through 13, and the parallel verses to this um, tells us that Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. These reported it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. So obviously, that scripture in Mark is talking about these two disciples, okay? They, they were, it has to be the same ones. They were walking in the country, Jesus appeared to them, but it says that Jesus appeared to them in a different form. 
Now, why is that? Why did Jesus intentionally appear in a different form so that they wouldn't recognize him? Well, we'll get back to that in a minute. Um, But he intentionally hid who he was, or at least his physical form, from their eyes. Okay, so he, he didn't want them to recognize him at the moment. But let's also take a step back and remember what the disciples were looking for here. Okay, so they had been with Jesus. They'd been with him in his ministry for three years. And in the whole time, what are they, they looking forward to? They are hoping, verse 21, we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. Now, what did that mean to them? Well, in their mind, redeeming Israel was saving them from Roman rule. Okay, so up to this point in Jerusalem, the Romans had had control. Okay, the Romans uh, took control over Israel or Jerusalem, and they had been there for about 60 years. Okay, so 60 years the Romans had ruled over the Jews. Okay, so they were looking for somebody, for God to send the Messiah to save them from these Romans and to establish an earthly kingdom with Jerusalem as the capital and the Israelites as his chosen people. Okay, but obviously that's not what Jesus was here for. Okay, in the Old Testament, this is some prophecy probably the Jews were looking at, or the disciples were looking at. In Daniel 2, 44, it says, In the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. So they were looking for an earthly kingdom, uh, not an eternal one. Okay, but the irony here is that they believe that because Jesus had just died, because they witnessed him be crucified on a cross, that that prophecy could not be fulfilled. Okay, but, but what's ironic about that is that it was actually because he died, they were actually witnessing the fulfillment of that prophecy. So Christ's death and subsequent resurrection was the seal and, the, and established not a physical kingdom, but it was a kingdom that was a spiritual kingdom, so an eternal kingdom. Um, and so they, they, were, they sort of missed what was going on here, obviously. They, they were looking at maybe some of the wrong prophecies. Okay, so let's, let's, let's see what happens next. So in Luke 24, uh, let's read on 25 and 27. So he, Jesus, said to them, How foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. The disciples were focused on the prophecies of what the Messiah would do, like we just read in Daniel, but they missed the prophecies of who the Messiah would be. So here's Jesus. Okay, He's walking up to these guys. Remember, they're confused, scared, they don't know what's going on, and Jesus lays out scripture about who the Messiah is. Okay, now we don't know exactly what Jesus said, but we have some idea, right, because we have the Old Testament. So what are some things Jesus could have told them? Well, there's a lot. Um, You know, most likely he could have started off with that he was born in Bethlehem, back in Micah, that he would be born of a virgin in Isaiah, that he would come from the line of Abraham in Genesis, that he would be descendant of Isaac and Jacob in Genesis and Numbers, that he would come from the tribe of Judah in Genesis, and that he would be an heir to King David's throne in 2 Samuel and Isaiah, that he would be called Emmanuel in Isaiah, that he would spend a season in Egypt and be called out of Egypt in Hosea, that he would be a prophet in Deuteronomy, that he would speak in parables in Psalm and Isaiah, that he would be betrayed in Psalm and Zechariah, that the money that was used um, that uh, Judas took for his betrayal would be used to buy a potter's field in Zechariah, 
that he would be falsely accused in Psalm, that he would be spit on and struck in Isaiah, that he would be crucified with criminals in Isaiah, that his hands and feet would be pierced in Psalm and Zechariah, that he would be mocked and ridiculed in Psalms, that the soldiers would gamble for his clothes in Psalms, that his bones would not be broken in Exodus, that the Messiah would pray for his enemies in Psalm, that the soldiers would pierce his side in Zechariah, that he would be buried with the rich in Isaiah 53, the Messiah would also be resurrected and that he would ascend to heaven and that he would be seated at God's right hand. Well, I don't know if Jesus went through all that, but that is an impressive resume. Just think about, that's just a handful, guys. That's just a few of the prophecies that were foretold about who the Messiah would be. Now, we don't know if Jesus went through all those, but think about him telling these guys, look, you guys have missed the boat. You're looking for something. You're looking for something that is earthly, that is going to be destroyed, that is a temporary kingdom. And that's not what this is about. This is about me as the Messiah to come and to establish a heavenly, eternal kingdom inside of you, to put God's temple inside of you. That's, that's what this, the kingdom was all about excuse me, was all about. <clears throat> so they were focused on the wrong things there. But um, Jesus opened their eyes. Okay, so let's look on, let's keep reading chapter 24, and we're going to look at verses 28 through 32. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? So at that moment... Jesus opened their eyes to who he was in physical form. They, they recognized him, okay, in verse 30 and 31. Let's go back and look at that. So what happened? So Jesus broke, broke bread with them, okay? Now, remember, th these guys had had dinner with Jesus dozens, probably hundreds of times over the past three years. They had seen him do this. They had seen him break this bread the same way many, many times before. So, but also remember when they last saw this, okay? The last time they were with Jesus, he was breaking bread with them. This is back at the, before he was arrested at the Passover meal, okay? In Luke twenty-two nineteen, And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this is my body given for you. So, it wasn't just that they had seen him do this before, but it also was part of the, the prophecy, the, the, even the promise that Jesus had given them at the Passover meal that he was going to sacrifice himself for them. That opened their eyes for them to see who he really was. But it wasn't just about them seeing Jesus in a, his physical form. It was much more than that because Jesus also opened their hearts to understand who he truly was and that he was indeed the Messiah. Those scriptures that Jesus had laid out, they finally got it. They realized they had their, their hearts opened and their eyes opened to the truth about this was the Messiah and all these prophecies that had, that had come were now fulfilled with Christ who was standing in front of them. In verse 32, this is a great verse says that were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. So even, that, even though on the road their physical eyes did not recognize Jesus, their hearts were crying out because the Messiah was with them. Okay? The spirit within them, within them was on fire, rejoicing in response to the risen Savior. What an awesome picture for us as believers that God's Spirit indwells within us and that our spirit cries out for Him, burns within us. 
And it's a great picture of our relationship with Christ because it's not merely knowledge. It's not all in our mind. It's not just what we can see with our eyes that makes us believers, right? It's, it's what's inside. It's what's in our heart. It's God indwelling in us and putting his spirit within us and that spirit crying out to know him, burning within us. And it's, it's such a great picture of how Christ opens our, our spiritual eyes for us to be able to see, um, to see the spiritual world and to see who he truly is. And it's just an awesome picture of Christ and what he does with us um, to save us. So I appreciate it, guys. I, I think you, about, y'all, you guys are going to go to your small groups now. Um, I'm going to lead us in prayer, and then you guys can be dismissed. Lord, I just thank you so much for the opportunity to, um, to open up your word, Lord, to share with these young men and women about who you are, Lord, um, that you do desire a meaningful relationship with us and that you put your spirit within us, Lord, to dwell inside of us and to set up your temple inside of us, Lord. And we just give you praise for that. Uh, We thank you for what we've just been through in the scripture studying about uh, your crucifixion, Lord, and your resurrection and the the plan that was laid out uh, all since the beginning of time um, that you are going to redeem us through your sacrifice. And we just thank you so much for that, Lord. And I uh, just pray that you would be with these young men and women as they go from here. And I uh, just thank you for all you do for us. And in the, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.